Hi, I'm Jenny, and in this video, I'm showing you seven watches which are perfect for smaller wrists. In this list are all type of watches from sporty to elegant within a budget, starting from 2,800 euros up to 70,000 euros. So let's get started. So as watches have been getting bigger and bigger over the past couple of years, I'm still left here with my 150 millimeter wrist size. And I thought, why not sit down and list my favorite watches for smaller wrists? So I have picked seven watches, which look absolutely amazing on wrists in the 150 to 170 millimeter size range, starting from 2,800 euro for you to check out, as it seems that most people who consider their wrists as small tend to sit within that size range. Before we get into the watches, I wanted to say thank you to Kutta 1825 here in Stuttgart, who lent me some of the watches you are going to see in this video. Kutta 1825 carries over 25 of the most popular brands available, starting from Alange und Söhne up to Zenit. So definitely make sure to check them out whenever you visit Stuttgart. The first watch I'm showing you today is one that wasn't really on my radar before doing this video. Most of you know that the Zenit El Primero movement was also used by Rolex for their Daytona up until 2000. And so when I did my video about the three watches cheaper but better than a Rolex with the El Primero 41 millimeter in it, many of you said that they did like the El Primero but with a lug to lug size of 50 millimeters, it is way too big for smaller wrists. So now let me present you the perfect solution to this problem. Because Zenit is also treating us with an El Primero with 38 millimeters in diameter, though the lug to lug of 47 millimeters makes this one look a bit bigger than your usual 38 millimeter watch. Every watch lover immediately recognizes the distinct dial design with its different colored subdials, with the exception that the date on this one sits at four o'clock instead of six o'clock. This watch is as classic as it comes with an added bonus of 100 meter water resistance, which makes swimming no problem. It also holds the in-house Zenit El Primero movement and you can get this on a leather strap or steel bracelet starting at around 7,800 euro. The next one is for all those who really love the design of a Rolex Explorer, but either are not keen on sporting a crown on their wrist or are not willing to wait around for their watch to be available. Besides one compromise that you have to make, the Tudor Black Bay 36 offers everything you can think of when it comes to luxury watches for a comparatively low price. With a diameter of 36 millimeters, a lug to lug of 44 millimeters and a height of 10.5 millimeters, this Black Bay is really confronting the problem many smaller wrists have with the regular black base as they always end up looking way too bulky on smaller wrists. This watch makes an ideal daily beater as it comes with the Tudor typical smooth finishing but also a robust case and bracelet. It would also make a great contender for one's first watch in this price tier of watches. Aside from that there are two things to point out even though I would say that they are easy to bear when considering the price tag of this. First, the clasp on this does not have any form of quick adjustment, which is something you would hope to find on a more sportier looking watch like this one. So adjusting the bracelet is only possible with a special tool. Secondly, as you can identify by the smiley lettering on the dial, there is no in-house movement built into this black bay, but a modified ETA 2824. Some might have an issue with that, even though the ETA 2824 movements are known to be robust and reliable. Bearing all that in mind, you can call the Tudor Black Bay 36 yours for a price of 2740 euro. Many might say that the Aquaterra is Amiga's answer to Rolex's Datejust, though the Aquaterra really is a watch with a self-contained design and history. Though Amiga offers a much bigger size of the Aquaterra, I am happy that they did not forget about the small wrists out there. And so the 38 millimeter version looks just as nice as its bigger counterparts. We've got the teak pattern on the dial, which is reminiscent of a wooden deck on one of these yachts, the wavy pattern on the side of the case back to remind us of the waves on the water, as the Aquaterra is part of the Seamaster collection. And we also have Amiga's in-house coaxial caliber 8800 beating away inside of it. It is not only super precise, but also entirely anti-magnetic. The Aquaterra is also, unsurprisingly, water resistant up to 150 meters, so you can totally bring it onto your yacht without having to worry it might break. 
in terms of price, the Aquaterra starts at around 5,300 euros, making it circa 1,000 euros less expensive as compared to similar Rolex models. As we speak of Rolex, let's take a look at the watch I was talking about before, the Rolex Datejust 36. With this watch, you get the standard Rolex Oyster case made from 904L steel, with a finishing close to perfection on a bracelet with polished middle parts and a clasp with a five millimeter quick adjustment built into it. This specific model I am holding comes with an off-white or kind of silvery colored dial with a sunburst finishing, perfectly applied stick hour markers and a date display at three o'clock. As with every modern Rolex, you get a super robust and reliable movement. Inside this one beats the Caliber 3235, an in-house movement that is known for its longevity. The Datejust 36 is also sometimes part of the discussion about whether or not it should be considered as a ladies watch. Besides the fact that I do not really believe in putting watches into strict categories such as ladies or men's watches, I have to say that the Datejust 36 looks good on almost every wrist when it comes to its size and proportions as you can see here. Especially for those with smaller wrists, the Datejust 36 is a perfectly sized dress watch compared to the 41mm version for example. The only downside here is the poor availability, though the Datejust 36 is not nearly as bad as the Sky Dwellers for example. Starting at around 6,550 euro, you can get the Datejust in various dial, bracelet and bezel variations. So we did talk a lot about tool watches in the first half of this video. So now it is time to put something dressy on the table. And that is where the Nomos Orion Neomatic 392 comes into play. With Nomos, you get the typical German Bauhaus design for a comparatively low price, considering all the things that you get with this watch. So first you have a very distinct design that works incredibly well, not only on special occasions, but also for wearing it on a day-to-day -day basis. Secondly, the quality of manufacturing is on a very high level, which you can see not only on the dial, but also when flipping the watch around to take a look at the movement through the sapphire case back. And thirdly, Nomos is also providing you with an in-house movement, which is something you pretty much do not get within this price range, except from Nomos, including all the nice embellishment on the movement parts. All of this sits in a 36 millimeter case that might look a little bit larger than you would expect, thanks to Nomos's lug design, but it atones for it with a super slim height of only 8.5 millimeters. Starting at around 2,840 euro, you get a solid watch made in Germany. The only thing this one can't do is accompany you to a swim as its water resistance is only 30 meters but besides that it definitely makes for an amazing daily companion. Everyone who is into Pilot's watches is probably well familiar with the IWC Pilot's Watch Automatic Spitfire. With its design, it comes very close to the Mark 11 released in 1948 that was being built for the Royal Air Force by IWC. With its 39 millimeters, it is comparatively bigger than the watches I have showed before. And we also have the thin bezel, which adds to the impression. But when it comes down to Flieger watches, I think this Automatic Spitfire represents a good mix of still small enough to be worn by smaller wrists and still being big enough to not lose the spirit of an aviation watch as they tend to be bigger anyways. The case itself is finely brushed on top and sandblasted on the sides, giving this watch a very elegant touch, which I really like. As to be expected, the dial is easily legible with a small date display at three o'clock. Especially at a closer look, you can see how well the dial is finished and IWC fans are happy that this one bears the nine numeral on the dial as the previous Mark 16 and Mark 7 models had only have stick hour markers where the 9 should have been, though the 9 could be found on the original Mark 11. Another nice detail is the NATO strap with its inner surface made from leather, which makes this strap super comfortable to wear. Admittedly, the NATO is a bit long, but you can tuck the end back or leave it out however you prefer it. With a height of 10.6 millimeters, this Spitfire sits rather flat on your wrist, and a little drawback is the built-in caliber, which is the caliber 35 111 a movement not entirely developed by IWC, but based on a Celita movement. With a price tag of 4,850 euro, the automatic Spitfire is still below the 5K limit and offers a great opportunity for smaller wrists. 
Last but not least, I wanted to mention the Rolex Daytona. When it received its update in 2016, in which the Sue bezel got switched out for a ceramic one, it became a really good option for those with smaller wrists. The new ceramic bezel frames the dial in a way which makes the watch look much smaller than it actually is. With its diameter of 40 millimeters, it is the biggest watch in this list, but it still works surprisingly well on smaller wrists due to its case and bezel design. The Daytona is a motorsport icon and the most current version comes with an in-house caliber from Rolex. You also get the immaculate finishing on all parts and the unmistakable Daytona design with its subdials. The model I'm showing you in this video is, compared to other Daytonas, slightly easier to get with a special understatement on top of it. Because at first sight, it might look like a full steel model, but this one is actually made from solid platinum, which makes this one not only the heaviest watch in this list, but also the most expensive one with a price tag of 70,800 euro. Okay, so that was my selection of my favorite seven watches for smaller wrists. But there are two more important things I want to add so you can be sure to pick the perfect watch for your wrist size. First, the diameter of a watch is not always a reliable tell when it comes to the overall size of a watch, because sometimes the lug to lug is more important, which is the length from one lug tip to the other, as it can be way more influential on the way the watch is going to end up looking on your wrist, especially in combination with the thickness or height of a watch case. Secondly, it is crucial, especially for those who are, like myself, a part of the ITBT wrist committee, to try on a watch before buying it. I know this is not always possible, but in case you can make it happen somehow, I absolutely recommend doing so, because that way you can really see how a case would work on your wrist. So that was it for today. I hope you liked the watches in this video. Let me know in the comments down below which watch you want to add to the list so we can build a nice collection of watches perfectly suited for smaller wrists in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching this video today and spending some time with me and I will see you in my next one. Bye.